Hello, I'm Emily Flores. Thank you for joining us. During this next half hour, we're recognizing the achievements of five amazing women, each one accomplished and truly inspiring in their respective fields of expertise. Women's History Month traces its beginnings back to the first International Women's Day in 1911. It became an official national celebration in the early 1980s. In fact, retired Utah Senator Orrin Hatch co-sponsored the first joint congressional resolution in 1981, proclaiming the first full week in March as Women's History Week. And since 1987, we celebrate the contributions of women to events in history and contemporary society throughout the entire month of March. Now we begin our local celebrations by honoring Utah's first and so far only female governor, the late Olene Walker. ABC4 News Chief Political Correspondent Glenn Mills reflects on the life and career of Utah's 15th governor. We're celebrating Utah women today and there's one woman in particular that stands out as a true pioneer among the many strong women in our state and that's Governor Olene Walker. Utah's first and only female governor passed away back in 2015, but her legacy certainly continues to live on today. Joining me now to reflect on the governor's life, career, and legacy are her daughter, Nina Sliding, closest to me, and then we have Amanda Covington, who served as Governor Walker's spokesperson. So great to have both of you with us. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Uh, Nina, let's start with you. When you think about Olene Walker, the woman and the mother, what comes to mind? You know, I feel so fortunate to be, I was one of seven children and she was just a lot of fun to be around. She had endless energy and I think she kept us going. Um, one thing that has really stuck with me is how she believed in each of us and really taught us to that we could accomplish anything that we wanted to do. And she did that by going to several swim meets, several tennis matches. She just was there for us and kind of inspired us to to become what we wanted to be. Amanda, let's move on to Olene Walker, the politician. Yeah. What type of a leader was she? Olene Walker was a stateswoman, um, and I would think we'd all agree she was very authentic. So you knew what you had in the room with you uh, when Olene was speaking and talking. Um, she was brilliant at setting a vision for the state of Utah. She was deeply concerned about the citizens of the state and what their future and their children's future would be. So she planned forward. Yeah, let's talk more about that. Her vision and some of the things she did uh, while she was our governor. Let's name off a few of those things. Uh, let's go ahead and start start with you, Amanda, because she really did a lot that you can look at today and say, "Wow, she was looking toward another day when she was doing this." Yeah, and maybe I'll open that with you know she shares that when she was elected into the state legislature, she asked. Uh, governor Bangor mm -hmm. at the time, or he wasn't governor at the time, but what she should do uh, when she got elected. And the first thing he told her was to learn the budget and that she would be effective if she knew the budget. So when you look at that knowledge that she gained, some of those legacy items that came out were the Rainy Day Fund, which has served the state very well, um, and we have you know, a AAA bond rating. She started in office when I was with her looking at tax reform. Look at what we're doing today. I mean, that's yes, monumental. Very similar conversation, right? <laughs> right. She, was, she was big about a balanced budget. She was big about affordability with health care and with housing. Um, I, there's probably many more that you could speak to. One thing I'm interested to hear from you, Nina, is what did you see in your mother from her being a mother to you and how she then carried that over into the political arena? You know, one thing that has really struck me as I travel around, I'm kind of in the political realm behind the scenes mm -hmm. a little bit, and I have countless people come up to me and just say, you don't know what an impact your mother had on me just because she was a listener. Mm -hmm. So she would, somebody would approach her with a problem and she would genuinely listen to them and then try to help them solve that problem. And I think just truly caring about people um, was what made her so effective. Things can certainly get contentious and heated in politics, but what did you see from her personality through those hard times? Did you ever see her speak a negative word of anyone else? I never <laughs> heard her speak ill of anyone, and there were some tough times in that office. And Let's think about that for a minute. A governor, a politician, and you never heard an ill word toward another person. I didn't. Even in the toughest of times, like down to midnight at the last, uh, you know, before the yeah. bell of the closing session, uh, she, and as hard as things were, even when it was just her and her trusted friends or family, never ever said an ill word about anyone. Um, she really was an example of civility mm -hmm. and decency and common respect. And there were times people would come into her office to ask for things that we knew she needed to say no to, but they always left with a smile. Yeah, let's talk more about that because you're not saying she was a pushover. No. 
Was no. she tough as well? I think at the, the end of the day, to her, she knew that we were all Utahns, first and foremost. And so that's what mattered as people. And there, were all, there was always ground room to work and to negotiate and come together. And that's what, that was her style, and that's what she did, is she brought people together to solve really tough problems, as Amanda has said. So I already mentioned the fact that she's Utah's first and only female governor. So, you know, breaking, tearing down that uh, glass ceiling. Let's talk about her legacy and what she meant to other women getting in, involved in politics. What type of an example did she set to both of you who have also been involved in politics? You know, I think back from my earliest days, she was always involved in PTA, in school service, community service, and I think that is her legacy, is really to, to be engaged in something, a good cause, whether it's through your community, whether it's through your church, but be actively engaged. And she, in her last few years, she set up the Walker Institute at Weber State University mm -hmm. for that very purpose, to engage students and let them have the opportunity to do internships and to really engage. Your thoughts on that? So I met Governor Walker when I was in my mid-20s, and I'm really grateful that it was that early in my life and career that I had the exposure to her and some of her philosophies. And one thing she taught me and many of us is that there are seasons in life. You can't always do everything at once, but you can find time to do all the things you want to do over the course of your life. And one of those things was education. If you look at her history, she went all the way through a PhD while raising a family and being civically engaged. So there's a lot to learn from her um, as a young woman woman or a woman in your mid-career or even later in life. She never stopped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So many things we could sit here and talk about with Governor Walker, but unfortunately, uh, we have run out of time. Appreciate your time and your insight that you have shared with us today, and uh, happy Women's History Month to the two of you as well. Thanks, Thanks you. Glenn. You bet. From politics to the wide world of sports, women are doing it all. Coming up, gymnast Michaela Skinner inspires many with her dedication and drive to be the best. But first, when it comes to success, this Utah woman really stands out. Gail Miller is running a full court press on the business world, paving the way for future generations to follow their dreams. Our celebration of Utah women continues in just a minute.